not following my interest. That's it. You can end the video right now. In university, I always wondered how the good programmers in my class got there. Was it some secret productivity hack? Were they a mathlete? Did they start coding at 7 years old? Sometimes it was a yes to all three. Dang. But I also had some students in my class that were a lot older and going to university for the first time in their 30s or 40s. And they were cracked. And the similarity between the child prodigies and the mature students? Whatever they found interesting about programming, they dove straight into it. They didn't care about how efficient it was, if it was related to the curriculum, if it would get them an internship. They just executed on their interest first, and it just happened to teach them a lot of things on the way. As an overthinking Ali Abdal enjoyer, I could never think like that. Everything has to be the most optimal, efficient decision that is time blocked on my calendar. So when my classmate told me he was learning Android dev, when we were doing a class on computer architecture, I immediately started seething. I was this meme. But what does all this mean for you? Please explore your interests in programming. Don't confine yourself to a box. It doesn't matter if you work as a front-end dev but want to learn Rust. It doesn't matter if you're a student studying algorithms and want to learn a bit of UX design. Whatever interests you, make time for it and explore it. I learned this concept from the book Drive by Daniel H. Pink. In the book, he talks about internal motivation and what really drives us to do stuff. He referenced a hackathon by Atlassian where employees can work on whatever they want for 24 hours. And this hackathon led to more motivated employees, and some products that Lassian actually sell today. Dr. K also has an exceptional video on this, where he talks about how productivity tactics just cannot replace an internal desire to achieve something. Of course you guys of all people know, I love the cheeky productivity hack. But there's something about just wanting to do something from within. Like wanting to beat your friends in a video game, or just wanting to get good at a skill. Whatever it is, chess, ping pong, programming, it doesn't really matter. But we all know what that feeling is. Like the best way I can put it is, Vegeta uses a lot of discipline to be as good as he is. But there's a purity within Goku's desire to be really good for the sake of being good. I don't know if there's a word for it, but you can tell. That's why my biggest regret is prioritizing the practical, the optimal outcome. While of course there's a time and place for that, I really shouldn't have spent 100% of my time coding just for my work and career. That's because things that motivate you extrinsically, like money or status, they can only provide so much satisfaction until the next thing on the hedonic treadmill gets you. If I just followed my internal motivation, I would have learned so much more. I found Vim cool since I was like 20, but I still used VS Code because Vim isn't practical. I've always found low-level programming super fascinating, but I never touched it because the job market wasn't there. I've sold myself short on so many instances, just because I optimized efficiency instead of interest. I know it seems luxurious to spend time learning for fun, but even just an hour or two hours across the week spent pursuing your interest, it can spread into other parts of your work. It took me years to realize that pursuing your interest is the most efficient way to learn. So whatever crazy, ambitious, silly idea you have, go and build it. One of the rare occasions where I actually pursued my interests was this YouTube channel, and it's led me to pursue so many silly things after that, like the iconic Zigachu. So don't be like me. Don't sell yourself short. Make time for your interests. You never know where they might take you. And thankfully the regret I don't have is not using Kinsta, the sponsor of today's video. Kinsta provides managed hosting for WordPress. It has everything you need. Enterprise-grade security. A dashboard so clean that it feels low-key illegal. And up to 200% faster site speeds. And in the event that things break, you're not stuck yelling at some chatbot. You get real WordPress experts, 24-7, who fix problems fast. And G2 crowned them number one in managed hosting for WordPress. So go ahead and start shipping your sites on Kinsta. Your first month is free, migrating onto Kinsta is free, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. To get started with Kinsta, scan the QR code on screen, or check out the link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you to Kinsta for sponsoring this video, and thank you for your time. I am Big Box.